I am in the middle of renovating my very 90s house and I'm looking for the perfect light fixture to replace this boring old dome light above my sink. But after countless hours of internet shopping with nothing to show, I thought, why not make something of my own? There are a ton of DIY ideas out there, so today I'll be counting down my top 10 while I customize this basic lantern pendant to make a statement piece for my kitchen. Let's get started. Okay, the best DIYs start with a plan. So before we jump into the list, let's first assess our space to nail down the exact look and feel we're going for. I decided to buy a new foundation piece altogether. My style is French country, so I was looking for something traditional, but depending on your style, there are plenty of other great places to start. I shopped around until I found something roughly the right size to fit this space, and also that matched the aged bronze chandelier in my breakfast nook. As I'm opening this up and unpacking, I'm also starting to think about how I can take inspiration from my room to ensure my light fixture is really working to pull everything together. Think about textures, colors, and materials you already have in your home. We're in the middle of painting our cabinets and part of that project involves switching our hardware over to a brushed champagne gold. So I definitely wanna add that somehow. We've also been trying to incorporate wood accents throughout our house, including this massive 10 foot wood table in our loft, as well as these wood shelves in our living room. So I'd like to see a nod to those here too. I'm also thinking about the shape of the area versus my light. I know I wanna get this light as high as possible to not crowd the sink while also lengthening the overall shape so the proportions seem right for this narrow yet tall alcove between my cabinets. All right, we've narrowed down our plan, so let's head to the shop and start customizing. Option one, good old paint. For a gold accent, I'm gonna spray paint the arms of my lantern a hammered gold color. Spray paint is a great choice for light fixtures because it's easy to use, comes in a ton of different colors, including metallics and even chrome mirror finishes. It also has plenty enough adhesion considering the light won't be touched or scratched. I'm wrapping up all the electronics with some painter's tape first, and then giving the arms each two light coats of paint, making sure to get up in every nook and cranny. Then I'm gonna let this dry for at least an hour between coats. You could also play around with stencils here if you're looking for additional patterns or designs. Option two, gilding wax. Now, if you want a further customization of color, you can consider adding gilding wax on top of your paint or on its own. This is a metallic wax product that you can brush, wipe, or tap onto any surface to give an extra shine. I usually use this product for refreshing old furniture handles or giving a highlight to inlaid details. For me, wax helps me take the painted look of the spray paint and upgrade it to a more authentic metallic semi-matte brush look that really closely resembles my cabinet handles and poles. Option three, faux ceramic. Speaking of wax, let's jump to another idea. I made this faux ceramic texture on a couple of glass vases. It's made out of just a 50-50 mix of paint and baking soda, followed by a dusting of brown furniture wax. I'm imagining this texture on something like the light of a barn light, or even on an organic shape made from a canvas or paper mache. This method is a super easy way to mimic stone or clay pottery. And the great thing is that the color and depth of texture is entirely up to you. I'll leave a link to my video down below on this in case you're interested. Option four, greenery. On the topic of vases, you can also consider adding faux greenery to your light. This might sound tacky at first, but there are some beautiful examples online that really lend well to a bohemian style. You could also consider adding real greenery in and around the different holidays, simply by winding it around your existing light 
or using twist ties to adhere more permanently. Just be sure to use LEDs and keep the greenery out of direct contact with your light bulbs to avoid any fire risk. Option five, wood. Let's jump back to my light. So while my paint is drying, I'm gonna build a wood trim to go around the bottom of my lantern. This is gonna give me the extra length I need to get a good proportion in my space, as well as give it a more rustic look and varied texture. I picked up some select pine from the lumber store, and I'm gonna be using my miter box and a good old handsaw to cut these at a 45 degree angle. After test fitting my pieces, I'm gonna add a bit of texture using the same method that we use to create our big 10 foot table. Essentially, we use a wire wheel brush to grind out the soft pulp of the wood, as well as add some notches with an ax. This gives it a really nice hand hewn finish and I'll link the video down below for this as well. Once I'm happy with the texture, I'm gonna stain the wood with my favorite color, Early American. And once that's dry, I can glue it directly onto the frame with some E6000 glue. Option six, more glued stuff. <laughs> there are probably a hundred other things that you could glue onto your lights including rhinestones, beads, crystals, shells, glass tiles, mirror tiles, metal embellishments, or even decorative wood appliques. The world is truly your oyster here, and this is probably one of the easier DIYs on this list. So head over to your local Michaels or Joanne to see what you can find. Option number seven, hanging decorations. There are also plenty of materials to hang from your light, including wood beads, glass or plastic crystals, chains, tassels, feathers, or other ornaments. Adding a wooden circle or some other kind of frame can help give you the structure to work with and to adhere to. As a bonus tip, one of the best and quickest hacks for the dreaded boob light is adding a lampshade. Option number eight, wrapped materials. If you don't wanna add structure or significantly change the shape of your base light, you can also play around with wrapping different materials around different parts of the light. For example, rope, twine, wire, ribbon, or even fabric. These are great options for adding organic textures or a touch of softness to the light and can be adhered directly with a hot glue gun. Option number nine, customizing the height of the light. Let's look at something that's a bit more structure oriented. A lot of pendant or chandelier light fixtures come with some options around height. In my case, I really liked my light, but I needed to convert it to a semi flush mount to maximize the headroom under this sink. Ours didn't have a conversion kit, but we could do this by cutting our wire shorter and reusing some of the internal mounting hardware of our previous light. You can also go the other way around and convert a flush mount light into a pendant by extending your wires and using a chain to anchor the light down lower. Doing this type of conversion does require some electrical experience, so proceed with caution. I'll leave some links down below for how to learn more. And before we get to number 10, let's take a minute to appreciate my new light fully installed. This really brings my kitchen together by creating a focal point above our sink. It's the right size, shape, and placement, matches our cabinet hardware and the other light fixtures in our house, and even has a rustic wood nod to our furniture. And we've made it to option number 10, assemble your light at the store. Did you know that there are also DIY customization options available at Home Depot or Lowe's? You start by picking the basic light shape. So for example, this height adjustable metal rod, and then you can add a variety of light enclosures or covers to get the look you want. So example, metal cages and glass domes. This lends to a bunch of different customizations, and you can also try playing around with different light bulb temperatures, different styles of bulbs, including LED Edison bulbs, 
different shapes and sizes too. And that brings us to the end of our list. If you've tried any of these, let me know which is your favorite down below. Thanks for sticking around and I'll catch you next time.